at this time, and right before we serve dinner, it would be unfair not to have our Supreme President give his remarks before our honorees have to leave. So please join me in welcoming our leader, the Supreme President of the Order of Ahepa, Mr. George Foriatis. Thank you, Nico. Please, uh, if you could be seated. To our most honorable Prime Minister, Kiriakos Mitsutakis, and dear friend, the honorable President of the Republic of Cyprus, Nico Anastasiadis, another true dear friend, to Your Excellency. The United States Ambassador to Greece, Jeffrey Pryat, to all the other distinguished guests of the dais, and to all of our dear friends at Table 19. And when I say Table 19, what I am talking about is at Bene Berith International, Daniel, the CEO, Mary Ashen, President Charles Kaufman, Alan Schneider, Director of the Bene Berith World Center in Jerusalem, Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations, Executive Vice Chair Malcolm Honline, and CEO William Daroff. Please give them all a round of applause. <clears throat> as well as to all of our dear friends here, to our Grand President, and to each and every one of you. Tonight, after this changed world of the last two years, this hurricane that we have all been in, two years involving a pandemic, border issues across the Eastern Mediterranean, tonight is Hellenism's finest hour. Tonight, we celebrate the 200th anniversary of the bicentennial of the Greek War of Independence. And I must, because it is customary that we speak of the Greek revolutionaries of 1821. Those brave and gallant fighters for freedom that raised the Greek banner of liberation from a religious persecution, brutality, savagery, and from rule of the force of darkness. It is appropriate to be reminded tonight, again, not just then but now, of these events and the efforts of the heroes that marked the founding Prime Minister of the modern Greek nation. Heroes such as Papa Flesas, Ypsilatis, Kolokotronis, Andrutsos, Nikataras, and so many others. An ambassador, along with the American heroes, such as Dr. Samuel Gridley Howe, Jonathan Peckham Miller, George Jarvis, Jonathan Allen, and William Townsend Washington. We must also recognize tonight, and I often have, with fascination, with wonderment, how it was possible for the Greek people of the revolution, on whose shoulders each of us stand today, how they held on to their heritage and culture, including their language, their religion, during a period of tyrannical oppression, during the long 400 years of subjection and enslavement. The Greek people, on whose shoulders each of us stand, have been brought on more than one occasion even today with the Greek genocide and its continued denial, more than one occasion to the very edge of disintegration, to the brink of biological decay, the survival of a Greek national sentiment, the perpetuation of Greek thought, included the vitality of the Greek language and religion. And I submit to each and every one of you that that constitutes a most remarkable and perhaps one of the most remarkable phenomena of all time. The Age of Enlightenment, with the world coming out of the Dark Ages, led to the Greek concept of freedom sparking in a short 45 years. Throughout America, France, and the Greek revolutions, 
Each of these were inspired by ancient Greece. The Hellenic ideals that fueled the Enlightenment and Western civilization were handed down whole and unfragmented by the Greek people, culminating in 1821 after centuries of darkness and despair. Now, let's talk about why we're here. Let's talk about why we're really here. What is the benefit to each of you of being here? We have a room of people decked out in the nines, graced by the presence of Greece's finest civil servants and military personnel, all throughout the audience with our brothers and sisters. Yes, we're, we're here for the Ahepa Grand Banquet, but not just to honor the Greek bicentennial. I submit, we have the luxury of having world leaders at the table in front of us, as well as others, power brokers, at other tables. We're here to honor the Prime Minister and the President, both integral activists of Eastern Mediterranean, Europe, and Western civilization. And to our friends at Table 19, we're here to honor our great friend and our modern day great uh, Dr. Samuel Ridley now, our Jeffrey Pyatt, as well, with us in that party. Representing an unfair and unabashed ambassador, the world's greatest superpower. Why do they even benefit from it? Don't we each, not to mention them, have other things to do? And that was and continues to be instrumental in promoting not only the trilateral partnership, but also the three, now the three plus one, now the three plus one, now we're here to two. That's why I became a lawyer of countries with common interests, with the help of building bridges as a binding factor, of underscoring our common, common Hellenic values and ideals. The benefit of coming here with these world leaders in these times, the three worlds at risk, come up many times since the Dark Ages. The free world is at risk of weak defilement. Free, the free world, is those with Hellenic ideas and freedom. The risk is we fight the forces of darkness. We are here because we realize that Greece and Cyprus cannot ever fall. If they do, Europe would fall. And then who knows? As the American President Thomas Jefferson once said, it was Greece that was the light. Of the world in the Gothic darkness. So, let's say that you can westernize nations as much as you want. But when they pick darkness, when they place their claw prints in the Eastern Mediterranean, in Syria, in Yemen, Qatar, Armenia, when the forces of darkness seek to sign up other nations based upon extremism, on ideology, of attacking Hellenic ideals of, of freedom, and our way, very way of life. When self-proclaimed leaders of darkness reject Hellenic ideals and freedoms, blocking information, arresting journalists, purging judges, and the sign. Ladies and gentlemen, we do not need to go back to 200 years, or 400, 400 years before that, or 20 years ago to even 9-11. I submit we go back to the Battle of Thermopylae, Thermopylae. That battle is still going on today. A fight to defend Hellenism versus the forces of darkness which is a threat to Europe, a threat to the Eastern Mediterranean, a threat to America, and a threat to the world. Our relations are at their peak, and I'm so glad to hear that they will get better, because tonight you are here because we're investing in our future. We're investing in our very free existence. Elefteria y thanatos. He left the day he found out this was first invoked during the American Revolution by Thomas Paine when he stated, give me liberty or give me death. The world now is in a great state of transition. The world is burning and nations, nations are picking sides. Did you ever look at something and say we have a problem? And you don't know how to, what to do about it? Sideways, when you're trying to think, how do we handle this problem? AM 
understand. They understand. We are all here tonight as allies of the highest order of maintaining mankind. I don't know how not misunderstand. Greece is not the country of a blackmailer with refugees, not the country of a blackmailer harboring terrorists, not the country of a blackmailer threatening war with its neighbors, threatening Europe, denying airspace to its friends, or denying genocide, or denying human rights, and committing daily religious persecution. Sklavo many, almost 400 years, almost extinguished. The Greek Revolution, against all odds, is what we celebrate today. And it will continue to be the world's watchguard in such a because perhaps the reason why we're here tonight, we fear that the next few years may determine if we live in darkness for the next few years. America would not exist without the Hellenic ideals. Neither would the other countries that have picked the side of the world, the side of freedom, the side of the Hellenic ideals, and the side of defending Hellenism. However, in each of you, the world, the we come for almost a century. We must rise together above selfish interests and find our common threads and find our shared Hellenic ideals. In many ways, we start our journey, our journey to, to Ithaca, Ithaki, our odyssey. Because today is not a celebration of glory or rising above 200 years ago. Tonight is not just a celebration of the world's greatest interests, uniting in common cause against darkness, but because tonight we realize that together, our journey to Ithaca, our Ithaki, our odyssey is just beginning. Freedom, democracy, liberty, these are not guarantees. They are earned every day. Like Odysseus on this journey, we are all lost at sea. And at times, and in this age, and in the Eastern Mediterranean, my friends, it is a troubled sea. The head of the greatest of organizations, the modern day community of Lydia, the company through diplomacy, continues to build bridges between nations in the sense where we perpetuate all that is American product, which is code for Western civilization. And what we do, each of us, in the future to help defend Hellenism matters now. And for all, not just 20 years ago, the countries of Germany, led by Greece, by Cyprus, by Israel, and the world superpower, the United States, understand that now, today, each of us, all of us, we are all in the cave with the Cyclops. Tonight, it's my hope we understand that the only thing that can save us is by working together. Why we're here. Sometimes the most difficult questions in life are also the simplest. We're here because our our Ithaki, our journey, is not over. It's real. It's life. And together, we must never lose sight of the ultimate goal to never leave this golden age, to increase it. Play with us together, all of us together, because we never want our golden age to be erased by darkness. See you next time. Bravo, George Koryatis. A round of applause for our Supreme President.